Hello there, and welcome back to the channel. I am Durka, and today we will continue our video series looking at ranked strategies and how you can help to improve your win rate and to do better in this tier four ranked season. So the topic of today's discussion, destroyer hunting. We are in the tier four American Farragut, which is a bit of a monster. We're using the Halloween 2.0 Commander Vinny with Observant Rage. Look at me now. Twist and Track, Sheltered Arms, and Unstoppable. We are using Eric Bay as an inspiration for increased concealment and Philip Vian for incoming fire dispersion. We're also using Aiming Systems Mod 1 and the Prop Mod to have a little quicker takeoffs and to get up to speed faster. First off, to explain what I'm doing here, at the beginning of this match, I like to come into this little gap to get uh, line of sight on the enemy ships to see how they're going to deploy, which way they are going, and that will help my team behind me decide how that they should counter it. Also, sometimes, if you're lucky, you can catch an enemy destroyer coming into B, and since my whole purpose in this game right now is to hunt and kill them, that is exactly what I need to be doing. I would say that there are tons of strategies you could employ in ranked and standard battles to win more games and to be more successful. Uh, the premise of today's video is generally very effective if done correctly. In ranked, it's more effective, I would say, because the number of enemy destroyers is almost always two. There have been a couple instances where it's not, and in standard battles, it can fluctuate wildly all the way up to five. So, destroyers are the eyes of the team. Without them, red team movements will often go unnoticed just as blue team movements would go unnoticed. By eliminating the enemy destroyers first, your team will have a massive advantage, being able to move unnoticed, take up the best firing positions, and not to mention eliminating the torpedo threat. Like I mentioned in the first video, spotting is one of the most valuable things you can do as a destroyer for your team. Therefore, eliminating spotting from your enemy team can be equally as important. So to be more effective at this, one, you should be in a good gunboat. You know, if you're in a Mitsuki, don't be looking for a fight. The American lines, the French, the Russian destroyers, and to a certain extent, the German destroyers can be very good at this. Two, have your commander spec'd out to do anything that it can to assist you in a gunfight or a knife fight. Uh, this could include things like faster reload, quicker turret traverse, sometimes a little HP boost uh, can help. Uh, three, I would always be using Twist and Track if this is the game style that you're playing. It will greatly assist you in watching enemy ship movements and will allow you to hunt enemy destroyers and to evade the ships that you shouldn't be hunting. Now that sequence of events there, I generally would not recommend shooting torps when you're in a gun battle with another destroyer unless you can do it quickly and effectively and keep firing your guns. If you're taking 10 or 15 seconds to line up your torp shot, especially on a destroyer that's evading and you're probably gonna miss the shots anyways, you know, during that time, the enemy destroyer is probably pumping you full of shots. The reason that I did it there was because he was perpendicular to me. He only had one gun. It has, you know, a nine or a 10 second reload. So I knew that I could get the, the torpedoes off effectively and kill him a little bit faster. Twist and Track told us right where the other Masuki was going to be, and the only thing that I need to be watching out for is this Krasny Krim. We're gonna pause here a second to use this guy's smoke and maybe try to light a fire on the Krasny Krim here. I did overshoot the smoke, but like I've talked about in previous videos, if you look up at the mini map, at the two concentric circles that you have, the blue concentric circle is your detectability, and the white one is your detectability when firing guns. If you're ever in doubt if you should shoot or not in a destroyer when you're trying to remain concealed, look at the map. Is there an airplane or an enemy ship that is within that white circle? And in this case there wasn't, so I knew I was okay to go ahead and shoot. Mitsuki here, I don't know what he was thinking. Um, he definitely should have pulled back towards the safety of his cruiser and stayed away from me, but that is the second DD out of the game. 
and because of that there is little chance that their team has of coming back. One of the good strategies that you can employ in these American destroyers as well, if you have someone else spotting for you, then sitting in a smoke screen, especially when you're in a cap and just burning anything down that approaches you is a pretty good strategy starting at tier four, five, six, seven. You can use it all the way up. It can be a little less effective at higher tiers because of radar cruisers, but in this situation, we didn't have spotting, so we needed to get around the corner away from this guy. Here is another reason I use Unstoppable. Even though my engine is knocked out, I'm still able to move around the corner here, get into safety, whereas if he would have disabled it before I got around the corner, it might have been the end of the game. So very clearly in this game, I played pretty aggressively. Part of that is because I knew the enemy team had two Mitsukis, and there wasn't really a threat. If needed be, you know, I probably could have taken them both on at the same time because it's just such a, a terrible gunfighting ship. So at this point, I really wanted to put it in park, load AP, and wait for this cruiser to come around the corner, but he had me sonar, so I thought I'd go ahead and play a little more passively and just keep away from him. As a cruiser, it's usually not a good idea to chase destroyers around a corner because of torpedoes and also because if you're coming around broadside, usually, depending on what it is, their AP can do terrible, terrible things to you. So the Krasny Krim continues to pull around and we're just going to go ahead and move in the cap and make sure this game is finished. Krasny finally comes around the corner and my teammates take him out for me. And at this point, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Their battleship is so far out of position that he's not going to be able to do anything. So to recap, if you're a destroyer hunting, one, make sure you're in a good gunboat. Spec your gunboat to make yourself more effective at it. Faster guns, quicker turret traverse, things like that. Um, use twist and track if you have the ability. That's going to be your best friend in hunting enemy destroyers and for evading baddies. And uh, and then the, the last little point there, always be aware of what you're up against. If you are going against, you know, a uh, if, if there had been another Farragut in this game, I would have played it entirely differently over by my team because, you know, for obvious reasons, it would have been a much tougher fight for me. But knowing that there were Mitsukis, it was going to be a pretty easy one. So as always, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all the support. It's been awesome been having more fun doing this than I would have ever thought. Uh, leave comments below how you're playing ranked, how you're doing, like, subscribe, more content coming your way. All right, thanks guys.